Winston Roddick has only been in his new position as North Wales Police and Crime Commissioner for about three weeks. He's already had to fend off probing questions about political affiliations and professional conflicts of interest. Yet this energetic 72-year-old man has a steely gaze and a ready wit waiting for his detractors. RealNewsWire.com editor Jess Hemming met him at North Wales Police HQ in Colwyn Bay recently and asked him about the role, his ideas and his views on crime and policing. A well-respected barrister, he's been Honorary Recorder of Carnarvon, the leader of the Wales and Chester Court Circuit, the first Council General to the National Assembly for Wales and, in a previous incarnation, a serving Bobby in Liverpool. I think there are three uh, elements to uh, a criminal offence. One, before it's committed. Secondly, after it's committed. And thirdly, um, this is the, the, the effect and the consequences for the victim. If you can stop it occurring, and there are cost items to all three parts, big cost items to it. Detection is very expensive. Treatment of victims is very expensive. If you prevent it, you've cut out the other two costs, haven't you? Yeah. So that's why prevention is more important than detection. You don't need detection if you're good on prevention. In an ideal world, uh, that, that's the formula. But of course, <clears throat> no matter how good your prevention, you're going to have to need detection because offences will be uh, committed. Criminals are like the poor. They will be with us forever as the Bible says. Mm. So, um, priority number one, deter crime. Priority number two, solve those crimes which have been committed in as quick a time as possible so that those who commit crime know they will be brought to justice and suffer punishment by the courts. And the third is to attend to the victims of the crimes which are committed very, very important that we demonstrate to the victims of crime that they are in those three priorities. And I've got lots of experience of victims of crime and when I've been sitting judicially I read the, um, the victim um, impact statements uh, that's not read to the jury of course but it's relevant when sentencing the criminal and those impact statements they're usually very well drafted, um, with assistance, albeit, but they tell a very vivid story. And we who are concerned in the administration of justice, those of us who are concerned with policing, need to be reminded of some of those statements from time to time and realise we've got a major job if we're to have the goodwill of the people in attending to the victims of crime. But you mentioned there um, the victims. Um, and obviously the victim was quite uppermost in a lot. I mean, I went to the hostage in town and you spoke at length about victims of crime and, and how we need to pay attention to them. Does, and from your experience, does restorative justice, where the victim is involved in not only um, the, the crime itself, but also the punishment, yes. does that pay play a big part in your philosophy or... or do, do, do you think it's something that maybe we haven't got the luxury to have at the moment? You know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's a very, very good idea. I think it's a very good initiative and I support it strongly. Um, I think it does the victim a load of good and assists the victim um, very often um, to come face to face with, with the criminal. Uh, and um, it does the criminal a lot of good to come face to face with the victim to see what the effect has been uh, and it sometimes has a conciliatory uh, effect of getting the criminal to, uh, to realise that there's a human being, there's an individual uh, um, suffering as a result of what he or she did and that's what restorative justice is an opportunity to be punished in a way that makes amends. And if the victim is able to say, well, I'll tell you what amends I want. I want him to repair my windows. I want him to come and um, clean up after the mess he made. What's wrong with that? Um, 
the uh, unpaid work punishments that the courts impose very often it involves work of that kind, so that would be very good if we consulted the victim and said, what would you have this man do? What you cannot do, on the other hand, is to allow the victim to uh, overstep the mark and add to the punishment, in a, add to the severity of the punishment. It's for the courts to decide what the severity of the punishment should be. Restorative justice will determine what's appropriate by way of punishment. Well, as well documented social problems as one of the most deprived wards in, in the country, not just in Wales. Yeah. Um, and that itself brings particular problems which impact on policing. How aware are you of that? I, mean, I know you're covering five or six local authorities. How aware are you of that? And, and how do you, as the Crime Commissioner, direct policing in, in an area like that? You know, is it something that you have to rely on other partners to work with, like the, the local council and other agencies? Or, or, or is it something where you feel that, look, let's just get more police on the street? I recognise the um, peculiar position of real in terms of crime and antisocial behaviour and how it requires a concentrated programme um, and that we need to pay a lot of attention to it. And by doing that in real, we can learn how we might improve our performance in similar areas, if there is an area similar to real. But I think the thrust of your question is real is quite um, uh, stands out as a place where you do need to focus your police uh, um, pro, um, programming. Um, a lot of very useful initiatives uh, have been. Um, drawn up in relation to real specifically. Uh, I'm only just getting to know what they are. There's been a reduction in victim-based crimes in real. So that would um, be crimes against the person, would that? Yeah, victims-based yeah. crime as opposed to acquisitive crimes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's been, uh, there's been a reduction of 14.2% uh, reduction in victim-based uh, crimes which uh, compares favourably with the reduction across the whole force of 11.4. So, yeah. uh, you may say, well, that's only because there were much more crimes in real than elsewhere, but the remedies are working anyway. Um, that's one positive step. There's a long way to go. Also, the North Wales Police has a crime uh, reduction strategy um, and this was introduced to tackle the increases in crime experienced uh, in 2010 um, and 2011. And I'm just going to talk to you about some of the tactics which have been um, drawn up and which are real specific. Okay. Um, there's an inspector who will identify what um, and the police regard as the real trouble spots in real. Um, then the, the chief inspector who has that responsibility will review the incidents, the real incidents which are reported and try and classify them and try and identify what the hot spots are. Um, the, once an area is identified as having, say for example, um, a preponderance of antisocial behaviour complaints, then the monitoring of those identified areas will be given to the community police officers who will go there, monitor it by observation and also um, enter into communication with th those who complain, the victims. One of the problems we've had with regard to antisocial be behaviour, and we get lots of, of complaints on the phone, is identifying the complainant because the calls have not been all that clear and good. But the scheme I've just described of sending in the community police officers, not only does it identify who's causing the trouble, but it also assists in identifying those who suffer and who would otherwise be calling the police. The idea is is to get in there and, and get more and better intelligence on yeah. what's happening rather than taking weak cases to court where... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Taking weak 
um, cases to court is not the answer, I don't think. I, um, going back to the analysis earlier on, if you can prevent it, you don't have to take it to court. Hmm. Uh, and the victims would much prefer you to prevent it rather than saying, well, we've arrested them and now they're going to be punished. Yeah. I think they'd say, we'd much prefer it had you been there to stop it happening in the first place. I think so, yeah. so, Rill has a lot of deprivation. Crime and antisocial behaviour are um, partners of deprivation. You cannot have one with the other. The one causes the other two. Uh, and there's a lot of unemployment there. Uh, and it explains in part uh, why there is um, so much antisocial behaviour in that area. Are you man enough to, to change it and say, oh, well, yes, we've got it wrong, and, and, and change tack if you need to? Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, we all learn from experience, and if my experiences tell me that I'm on the wrong tack, I would be a fool unto myself if I don't change tack, and I would most certainly change tack. At the end of your tenure, your first term of office, um, what will constitute success for Winston Roddick? that I have achieved those three things which I said in my campaign I was I regarded as priorities that the um, public do see more police officers that the public do feel safer at home and that they do feel safer in public places. Mr Ruddick thank you very much indeed thank you